Hello, it's Thursday, and today I'm going to be making a dragon, but I don't know what kind of dragon yet, so let's take it to the wheel. Okay, so here's the wheel, same wheel that I've used before. I didn't make this particular one, I just think it's a lot of fun. Somebody else has put this one together and just made it available, which is cool. I've l I will leave the link in the description down below. And basically whatever spins up is what we're going to match together with the dragon today. So we could end up with a kangaroo dragon, a cat dragon, octopus dragon, koala dragon, you get the gist. Okay. And there's not going to be any practice spins this time. Okay. I promise. So whatever happens, happens. So spin. Be an eye on that arrow. A pig dragon. Okay. That's a challenge. Ooh, but I've got some ideas. Okay, let's do it. Okay, so, pig dragon. I think I'm gonna start just by exploring like the body shapes of a pig and just see how any of them translate to dragon. I suppose worst case scenario, this pig is finally gonna get to fly. When I'm thinking of pigs, I'm also not just thinking about like the stereotypical little pink piglet. I also want to explore things like the pot belly pig, maybe the warthog or a boar, something with like a little bit more tusk and bristle to it. Just, I do think there's just still pl there's plenty of like area here where we can just sort of see what shakes loose. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do a whole lot of sketching until I know what I want this dragon to look like. I do think one of like the main features of this has to be the nose. Big piggy nose will make any other shapes read as pig. Now I very early have kind of settled into this like little gruntle dude. <laughs> Some nice little spots on his back, but I don't want to like lock down that early. There's still all of this page to go, so I'm going to try and throw some different shapes at it. But this is currently the idea to beat, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> I just can't help it. The closer it gets to a ball, the cuter it is. <laughs> I'll still do the line work for like this one here, which is a little bit more of a like bore, but I just, I don't think I'm going to be able to deny the, the pure charisma that is the Gruntle Beast. So that's probably where we're going to end up. Okay, so those are our sketches. I will pop them on the other camera for you so you can see them properly. I did end up just drawing the same pig. <laughs> same pig dragon over and over again, so I guess that answers that question as to what I think this should look like. There is a chance that I will give him like a longer, fancier tail. I definitely like the idea of giving him some sort of spots or some sort of stripes. Um, Definitely like the horns standing in as the ears, but I'm a little bit out on whether or not he gets wings after all, so maybe this pig won't fly. Uh, but like, I just think that there's a real like nice beasty bristliness to him, so that's what we're going to go with. Now, colours are kind of the next hurdle. <laughs> so we have the option here of going with more like traditional pig colours. We could go pink or like even the boar colours lead into the, like the chocolate browns and the darks, but... More fun to go with more fun colours, and I do have all of them here. So, in the spirit of this project, I am going to pull out my, like, scrap bin, and we'll go, like, diving through what colours there are in there at the moment. Okay, we have lots of mostly full balls of yarn in here at the moment. Yeah, I guess I started a bunch in some of my more recent projects, and I haven't really gotten all the way through a lot of them. But we have a bunch of scraps from doing the anglerfish. I really don't know what colours I want to use. I'm having a hard time guiding us towards the correct answer because I haven't thought about it yet. I'm going to pop you down and I'm going to think about it. Okay, so we are properly stash busting today. I found this really sort of juicy orangey red colour. That's that's kind of like fun. It's not my normal brand of yarn. It's not, it's not the marble I'm normally using, but it's been sitting around for a while. I think it could be a really fun way to use it. I've got some pale yellow there that uh, just pairs nicely with the orange and I've got like a bridging colour, kind of blend the two together a little bit. So if I'm going transitioning from this yellow to this orange, I'll put some, some of this peachy tone in between. And then I've got an accent colour here, lovely bright grassy green. Yeah, I think that's just a really fun palette. I like the idea of going with these like really juicy bright oranges, which are slightly more pink in person. I'm just not great at capturing the colours because like I think that's still kind of in the spirit of his his 
holy pigginess. So we've still got a little bit of that like pig influence coming through while taking it to like that fantasy dragon level. So that's, that's a bit of fun, I think. So the next step is we're going to break him down into some shapes. So yeah, I think the main body nugget is going to include the foundation for the snout, but then I think that the snout itself can be a separate piece, maybe even an overlay just to allow us to tuck the teeth underneath and give us that good like layered mouth appearance. Um, wings I haven't mapped out yet because I'll decide as we get further into it whether or not I think it needs it. Um, I think I am going to use spike stitching for the body to give it some interesting texture. So I'm also not ruling out at this point the idea of brushing it to make it very like bristly and fluffy. A bunch of my hooks flew everywhere just then and that's fine. I'm going to add a little curly tail to the end of the tail which I think I'm going to do as a separate piece but might end up lumped in depending on the angle of the rose as we approach the back. And yeah other than that it's just a few little tiny features that we need to add on so now now the only thing to do really is to grab the yarn and start working on this main body piece. So I'm starting with the snout and I do want to in, like build in sort of a vaguely triangular shape to it. So that means that after I work up to a certain size, which for me is going to be 12 stitches, I'm going to start loading my increases into three main points in my round to encourage a very low flat triangle. Yeah, I've worked up to 12 and we're going to start loading it into three, three spots around and they're not going to be evenly spaced spots because I don't want an even triangle. I want a triangle that has one side longer than the others. So that's my first round of loading things into three corners. You'll see we've got a long side and two short sides and I'm just looking at it. I'm trying to decide if I want that snout to be bigger because if I want to make it bigger, now's the time to add that sort of size to it. I think I will. I, I, I'm going to push it up to 18 stitches just so that we can get sort of this little lip at the front. But if I don't like it, I'll always just, I can always just frog it back. So let's give that a go. Whew, that is a very honkin' schnoz. So to keep the rest of it proportional, that would mean the body goes up to about this, which is probably about correct. So even though this feels really large at the moment, looking at it at the size that I want the rest of it to be, and I do want him to be a good little sort of baseball sized handful, this is, this is a good starting point. So the next thing I have to do is add some length to the snout, this bit in here. So that is basically just doing rows of single crochet. And I'm going to guess it's going to be anywhere between three to five, but we'll start with three and then add more if we need to. So there we are, basically equivalent of this part here. So the next thing we want to do, if we look at my my, little, my tiny little picture here, is you can see that we are trying to build up the forehead. We want a lot of growth on the top of the head and transversely to the sides. So the whole top half we want to increase and the bottom half we want it to stay the same. And the way I've rotated my snoot is that my starting point of the ring is sort of in the in the bottom. So that gives me plenty of room to play when adding increases to the top edge here to curve out the top of that forehead. So that's the next step. And that's probably going to happen over the next three or four rows. But once again, it's just about doing one row at a time, seeing seeing if it's right, frogging it if it's wrong, or just like keeping keep adding to it as we go. Okay, so I have increased my round up to 42. But in doing so, I've accidentally formed a triangle shape where I want it to be a circle. So now all I have to do is put increases here in the next round, which will push it out wider at those points. And then it'll, it'll be a bit more of a round piggy. Now I'm already up to, like, like I said, 42 stitches. So after I've pushed that out, that would make it roughly around 46. And I'm not going any bigger than that. more round. Then it's just a matter of like forming the ball and playing with texture. So I'm not really sure anymore. I've been thinking about it. If I want to go with the spike stitch texture or if instead I want to go for like this kind of texture but like interlacing kind of a different color in there to get the, the spots 
So I have options and I know which one's easier because <laughs> it would be nice to weave some of that green in and, like more organically than just sort of stitching it on at the end. So I have opted for the spike stitch texture, which might seem like a bit of a boring option, <laughs> but I do think that it's right for this kind of project. I'm still thinking I might dot the green through it, but I could also just end up stitching that on afterwards. It's not going to be a big deal either way. So all that's really left to do for this main piece here is just to build up the rest of the ball of his body. We need a nice big chunky piggy. I might dot the green through. It'd be so easy just to stitch it on afterwards and not have to worry about making the notation for the spot. So I'll probably end up doing it that way if I'm honest. <laughs> Okay, so we have the main body of our little little piggy here, our Emboros. I think that's funny. I feel like so many of the pig puns have been taken by Pokemon already. <laughs> that I kind of like Pig Knight is also funny, but it's been taken. You know, oh, Emboros might actually be a Pokemon as well. Damn you, Nintendo. Anyway, so what you can see here is that as I've gone, we have skewed all the way off to one side but I genuinely think that when we stuff it you won't even be able to tell so I'm not going to worry too much about that that's more of a note for anybody following in these footsteps later don't worry about it we've added all of that width to the chunky little body and now I'm going to take a giant pile of stuffing and stuff our piggy there has to be one like fiery pig pun that hasn't been taken already there has to be There we go. So that's beautiful spiky texture on top. Really pleased with how this colour is turning out as well. So yeah, um, that's the most of the body. And now all I need to do is just sort of close off the base. Ooh, do I want to put the eyes in now or do I want to wait? I'm thinking I might pop this to one side with the back still open, just so that I can make the decision about whether or not I want to put the eyes through this layer or if I'm going to layer something over the top. And instead we're going to work on little piggy snout. So... <laughs> So I think this is going to work by, we're going to have like a nose piece over the top. I'm going to have two little teeth sticking out. Um, and then I'm thinking I might even extend it up the forehead a little bit. Just as though it's like a little armoured snouty piece. So I want very defined nostrils. But the easiest way to get that <laughs> is actually to like work this in rows. Basically, if I work this way, I can then like work some stitches in the middle, work some stitches on the outside, and leave these windows that become the negative space. And then we need a bit to run along the top of the snout, which we might actually want to curve down around the snout as well. <laughs> these hieroglyphics make sense to me. <laughs> now do we use that to create some sort of brow ridge as well? That's the real question here, or do I create like a separate eye piece? In any case, I know I want the, the tip of the nose to be the pale yellow, and then I want this orange colour anywhere that this yellow would otherwise touch the watermelon colour. I might start by forming the nose and just seeing what kind of foundation that, that, that lays for me. Right, so yeah, I think I'm going to make a chain foundation, probably single crochet a layer there. Then I want to work maybe treble crochet specifically down into that foundation so that I only have one on top. And then I'm going to single crochet around the whole outside. So very, very free form. Okay, so a million pieces later. Okay, not a million pieces, but... Um... What, one, two, three, four? Four pieces. Four pieces to make the, the top of the snout. And then I had to go get my pins, but we've got them now. And we're just going to pin this in place and see how we feel about it. Because I don't know at the moment. So just put like an un this underlayer on. Then we need the teeth. And I'm deliberately pointing the teeth downwards just because I think that um, if they're up, they become tusks and that takes us into very, very pig territory, where I do want to have at least some element of dragon here. So 
a little bit walrus, but we're, we're getting there. Then we've got our little nose, which is a little bit wonky, but doing its best. And I'm going to like sort of stretch and skew it into the exact position I want it to be. So I'm just like pin the tip there and then I'm just like stretch the sides out a little bit, I think, and squish it. And the eyes will go somewhere here-ish. You want to you wanna help me out there, friend? Okay, so looking at it, what does it need? Um, it's looking very serious at the moment, so we need to do something to bring it into some somewhere slightly more fun. Uh, in terms of texture, he needs his little sort of like face whiskers, pointy bits that wing off the sides. I do want to do something to help exaggerate the size of his eyes, so I'm satisfied deciding that we're not going to clip them on through the body, I'm going to clip them on through another piece that either is going to act like an eyelid or an eyebrow or even just like a white to make them just bigger. I think bigger eyes will really, really help him here. But in general, state is starting to come together. So at this point, I can close off the back of this piece and work on what I want the eyepieces to look like. So yeah, that's, that's where we're heading next. <laughs> <laughs> so with the face which is looking kind of wonky but we all know that it will come together when we start actually attaching things all those pieces made the next thing I want to do is the bristles for down the back. So I think I'm going to do them as a series of triangles. I thought about doing them as like layers of spiky hair that wrapped the whole way around, but I really want the green spots to show on the sides. So I think instead what I'm going to do is triangles that are these two colors and line them up down the back, um, which means that I'll be doing like a base triangle in our mid orange and then do like the tips of them in the brighter orange. And yeah, just layer up as many as we need. So that is the base triangle and there is the finished spike so the idea being that they just line up down the back so I guess I'm gonna make like three four more of those then I'll probably want them light to line down the tail as well so I'm gonna start by making I'll make four more of those for now but we'll put a little asterisk next to it we might make more once the tail piece is made as well Okay, so I ended up making six in total, and the plan is just to line them up kind of down the back. So, something like this. Don't know, I don't know if that's, yeah, I don't know if I really like that. That's like sort of one option, but then I also kind of wanted these fringy, fringy bits around the sides of the face as well, which I might make some more to do so I'll just pull these ones over for now okay I really like that hold on <laughs> just move it around so nothing's attached I can still move these around as much as I like until I decide to but there's just something very I really like that a, a, a lot more <laughs> that's where we're currently up to so next up I want to make some little trotters to give him give him a bit of a foundation now my partner has pitched pork crackling as the name so call him crackle and I like that. I think we're going to go with Crackle. We'll use the like the armor color for the base of the foot. I only want them to be really, really little, short, stumpy little trotters. I suppose I could give them claws, but we'll just see. We'll see how we like little stumps first. Okay, so that's twelve around, and that that might be the the size of the base of our foot wants to be. You've got a decided slope to you there, friend. But <laughs> It's so funny because you can't even really tell when you look at it from like the side or the front, but then you look from it underneath and you're just like, whoop, there it goes. <laughs> um, I, think, I think that is the size of the foot we're going to go with. And then I want like a hard edge to it because I want it to be like a trotter. So we're going to use some back post stitching to create that corner. So we've got like a nice hard edge to it now. And I think I just want it to be a little bit a little bit taller. Like I'm gonna use the the body color for the, the leg itself. I think I want the foot to be just slightly taller. So we'll go around again. It's twelve. 
and I think proportionally that's probably a good height. We only, like I said, only little tiny stumpy feet. There's no real point to like making real big ones. That's what we currently look like. We definitely, li we definitely like the stumpy feet. So I'm gonna go back a stitch and we're gonna attach a body color. Okay, so now I want a really hard edge between the colors here. So I'm going to slip stitch in the back loops the whole way around. Like so, so you can see that in there. Colors coming out a little bit nicer on you, so that's why we're swapping to this shot fairly often. And then I'm going to do a round of single crocheting over the top of those slip stitches, which will get us a really nice, you'll, you'll see in a second, you'll see which will get us a really like nice, crisp color change. Then the trick is to not accidentally skip a stitch, which happens more often than I, I want to admit. <laughs> we make it work. That is how those crisp color changes work. So I might do one more row of that, but then that's probably about it. There's like, we don't, we just don't want very much leg. <laughs> so we'll just finish that off. A little bit of stuffing, not a lot, just a little bit. And there is our finished little trotter. So I've got to make four of these, hold on. <laughs> okay. So four little trotty feet. Just chuck them underneath roughly where we want them to go. And I could put weights in them as well, but I don't think he's going to need it. He's fairly like body heavy, but I, I'll wait to sew these on until after I've made the tail just to see if that like tilts him backwards. Because maybe some weights in the front feet will help balance him back out again. I'll make sure that these are lined up too as well. I think I've accidentally slid one up the side of the body. <laughs> okay, all right. While I'm working on things like the feet, I may as well make some more of the embellishments. So that really means sort of spots. And maybe in place of these bristles that I originally planned down the back, maybe we go for the horns that I drew in like this concept over here. So I started drawing some ha little horns on some of them. Um, there's also like, I need to decide whether or not I want to put wings on him as well. So we might do like horns, wings and spots now. <laughs> now what color should it be? Yellow is kind of the color I've been using for like the soft fleshy areas and I've kind of been using this mid-tone for the armor. So it should, but I feel like I've used that a lot already. So maybe we go with the accent color for the horns. So I never drew a shape for the horns, but what I'm thinking is I don't want them to be very big. I want them to feel like they're embedded in the, in the flesh, so um, I'll, I'll be doing a colour change part way up. But I think I'm going to build up a little nib and then just load increases on one side, build like this kind of offset cone type shape. So I'll, so I'll just get that started by building up the little, little, little point. I could go smaller than six, but I try to avoid it. <laughs> but here we go. And then I think I'll just go around again to work up the little tip of the horn. It's looking neither horny nor tippy, but that's kind of a little nib. Could just leave it like that, have it as little, little buds, but no, I promised you offset triangles let's, or offset cones. Let's, let's offset it. So we'll do some single crochet around half of it. And then some increases around the other half. So you can kind of see that shape starting to form. So the opening is kind of like shifted off to one side. I'll give it some height just by working single crochet around a couple of rows. We'll go one row at a time though and just check it. So that's one row. And it's probably, honestly, probably big enough if I wasn't going to like embed it in this color as well. So I need to give a little bit of extra height to work with there for that, that embed embedding to work. So we're going to go around again. That. Okay. So squish it back into shape. That's the, that's what we've currently got to work with. So in the last stitch of that, I'm going to change to our main porcine color here. Then I'm just going to build up a little bit of like flesh. So something like that and you'll note that there's still quite a bit of separation between the two but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna finish this off first. I already know this trick will work. <laughs> I've done it to y'all before. 
we're just going to take the alternate colour and just fold it up the horn, tuck these ends down inside. Little secret, no one needs to know about those. And there we are, we have a little horn that has like the flesh growing up around it. Sorry for how badly my nails are clashing with this project, I've only just noticed how bad that is. Oh, you should have seen the colour they were yesterday though, it was it would have been way worse. <laughs> so if I just find the little which way around this goose, then when I sew it down, I sew it down so you don't see the green at the base and you only see the way, the way it grows up and around. So I suppose, I suppose I better make two of those. <laughs> How are you doing, Crackles? Little pork rosto, pork bow bun. Okay, so, okay, horns, check. So now I'm inclined to do the spots the same colour so that these don't stick out quite as badly as they currently do. But the spots are only going to be like tiny little things. Get into green. I might play with the the foundation of a magic ring. Just like that, we have a little oval shape, and I feel like I'm gonna need a whole bunch of those. Okay, so that's that's eleven, which is a very odd number for me to have made. So then it's just a matter of like putting these on the side of our maybe like oh, put a couple butt freckles on. Maybe we line them up down the back. That's a lot of green though. I could, do, I could do them in stripes, do them like little eyelashes. Just like tuck you there for a second and see if we like this. Oh, I might really like this actually. Okay, so we're gonna put some on the face. Maybe, maybe. Oh, this can change. Mm, three. We'll do three for now. Three on the face, three on the butt. <laughs> Welcome to my design process. I totally know what I'm doing when I get started and not at all making it up as I go. Oh, I like that. It's pretty. Then I've got three on one side and then I need three on the other, so I need to make another one. <laughs> Two and hold, please. There we go. And three. We like our symmetry. Face is starting to get very cluttered with a lot of detail. I'm hoping that once things start getting sewn on, that'll kind of simplify that down a little bit. So what else are we missing? I've got wings on this one here, but I don't have wings on any of the others. But I do think that because he's looking very piggy, I think that wings might be one of those non-negotiables in order to try and push us back into dragon territory. So I'm going to borrow from a wing technique that I've used before on like a little vampire bat. And I may have even used it on a dragon at some point, but I don't remember. You kind of work rows backwards and forwards to build up a very like jaggedy little staircase. Now I chose yellow for this because mainly because I used it for the snout I've, and I also used it for a little bit around the eyes and so like I feel like wings would be like really thin membrane and so like I feel like it'd be the same kind of color as those areas so a little zigzaggy bit and we'll work a little border in our main bacon tone. So up one side, down the other. Anyway, it doesn't matter, necessarily matter so much the stitch count, as long as you do roughly the same thing on the other one, because I'm of course going to do a second wing here, but let me just... Uh, the, this wool is... this particular yarn is splitting, so as soft as it is, you can see why I stopped using it, whatever the brand is. It's probably cheap. I'm pretty cheap when it comes to this sort of thing. And it's even a tax deduction for me at this point, but it's still... I'm just like, nope, cheapest I can find, thank you! It's a little wing. Some little wings. So I'll, I'll stitch on any details that I want on them later. For now I'm just gonna like pin them. Good idea for wings is to always just put them roughly where you imagine like the shoulder blades would be. Gives some sense of anatomy to even magical made up dragon pig lizard things. Okay, yeah, no, that's immediately way more dragon. So I think Okay, so yeah, reading way more dragon. Very, very much happy with the just something like as simple as those horns and those ears just immediately kind of took me a little bit closer to what I'm envisioning here. Though I still look at this sketch and I kind of want to make it in blue and purple. I'm just in a very blue and purple space right now, but I thought I would have gotten it all out of my system with her, but I didn't. But piggy, anyway. So the last thing we need to do is kind of a structural piece, and that is design this tail. And I do want it to be like like a real like swoop, but to shape that, I'm actually gonna like basically use the same technique I was using at the start of those horns, which is you load your increases on one side, and that creates the an opening that kind of swoops around. Yeah, except this time I'm gonna do it in our main bacon color, like a like a giant cornucopia or ice cream cone. 
that'll just like stick to the back. And then I'll work out if I need some more spots or curls or stripes or spines or anything else that I happen to need. So grabbing the bacon color, I'm gonna work up a tail. <laughs> then, okay, so the last little detail I wanna add, just last little thing is, you see this little curly cue at the end? I think we definitely want a little like curly piggy tail. And we're going to do that by working over the tail of our yarn. So I'll start with a single crochet so we get a nice fine point on it. But after that, I'm going to work half doubles. Gives you a little bit of extra height, a little bit of extra bang for your buck. And we'll just keep going until I feel like it's long enough. That's 10. We'll go for 12 because. I do like me a factor of six. There we go. And then all we're going to do is pull on this tail here and it should curl things up real nicely. Just a cute little corkscrew and I could go make it a little bit longer, but I think honestly I think that might be enough. So that's just like an ode to Piggy. Tie that off so it doesn't unravel on me. And that can go at the end of the more draconian tail. So, oh, what am I attached to? Oh, the tail isn't trimmed off yet. Okay, that's fine. So the last thing we need here is a sewing montage. So there is our finished pig dragon. I hope you had fun making him with me today. So we did settle on the name Crackle. So do let me know in the comments if I've gone more pig or more dragon with him and what you would have done differently. But also let me know if you kind of liked this format. It's a bit different to mashing regular animals together, but I kind of like the idea of just making a whole bunch of different dragon mashups this year. So <laughs> it's March. It was time for another dragon. So next Thursday, we do have episode six of the Pokemon series coming out. And I hope that you guys all tune back in for that. But other than that, I'll see you next week. Okay, bye. I left all my pins out here somewhere. Oh, boom. No, I didn't. Back in the room, that's my bad.